Michal did his PhD with another Michal, Michal Horodetsky, also in the University of Gdansk. And then he went on to, to do mobility fellowship, uh, like kind of a postdoc in the University of Cambridge, where he spent, I believe, three years. Right? Exactly. And you worked with there with Sergei Strelchuk, right? One of your co-authors in this work. And with uh, Narayana da Data, right? Yes. Or Nilanjana, I think. Yeah. Right. Yes. So, uh, right. So, Michal is a, a specialist in mathematical aspects of quantum information. So, in, uh, yeah, in particular, uh, applications of re uh, representation theory. So, he knows a lot about. Uh, Entanglement theory, port-based interpretation, quantum thermodynamics. Uh, so today he will be uh, explaining to us his recent results on benchmarking and classical simulation of uh, quantum processes using uh, biobases. Yeah. Yes. So the screen is yours. Thanks for okay. joining us. Um, so first of all, I would like to thanks for the session for this nice opportunity to present our results. Um, also, thank you very much for joining the meeting. And as I said before, only uh, for the talk, I will stop uh, video, video because my connection is not really, it's not really good. So, uh, so I will share only my screen. So as you can see, this is joint work with Daniel Franza from Copenhagen, and as Michal said, Sergei Stretcher from University of Cambridge. And it's about uh, some method uh, uh, designated for um, noise analysis in noisy quantum circuits. So, um, so why do we care about the, the noise studies in general, right? Uh, we know that noise in experimental and practical implementations is unavoidable. Every computation performed on quantum computer is a set of gates applied to qubits or qubits, and these gates are inherently noisy. And of course, such noise can have uh, completely different origins, right? For example, it can be caused by imperfect manufacturing or coupling to an external system which is, and such a coupling is in principle uncontrolled. So um, to design our devices well, I think we, we think we need to understand how noisy the set of quantum gates chosen to perform the particle task. Uh, we have to understand how different kinds of noises affect the complexity of uh, of the classical simulation. And up to my best knowledge, we are far away from error correcting codes right now. So to make sense of the measurement outcomes, uh, we have to somehow incorporate the noise model into uh, our analysis. And we have a lot of different methods of dealing with noise. Um, and of course, they have different regions of applicability. And this, this method, which we can see on the slide, um, of course, they have different costs, uh, which can be measured in time required to their preparation or amount of used resources, which make them simply too expensive in practical applications. Um, so the first group, uh, we can include uh, gate set tomography and state and channel tomography. They allow us to get full characterization of quantum channel or state, uh, subject to state preparation and measurement errors, which we call later spam errors. Mm -hmm. But the implementation um, require exponentially big uh, results with the number of qubits. So in fact, they are extremely expensive and uh, we cannot use them efficiently in uh, multi-qubit um, quantum devices. Uh, 
Mm. On the other hand, we can find protocols as a direct utility estimation mm, uh, or randomized benchmarking. And uh, in these two approaches, the goal is not to get the full knowledge uh, about our system, uh, but rather uh, but rather ask about some average interesting properties which uh, allow us to uh, allow us for better preparation uh, of uh, of our quantum device and thanks uh, to this reduction we can avoid exponential scaling scaling of the resource and today we focus on the fourth point which is randomized benchmarking mm. And, and to talk more about this random, randomized benchmarking, we have to uh, understand uh, what, we underst uh, what we understand by a noise uh, in the system. So, so, so we have to choose some model to deal with. So suppose that we have some ideal unitary gate denoted by U. Uh, and some noise in the system, which we denote by this calligraphic T. So we, we will make two basic assumptions that the noise is a CPTP channel and that noise uh, uh, affects uh, every unitary gate that uh, in such that we that to have uh, the results of the noise, we just compute um, the composition of the noise and uh, given uh, target unitary gate U. Uh, and using randomized benchmarking, we investigate how close a physically performed operation is close to the ideal target unitary. Um, so. So we are interested in finding uh, average fidelity, which is defined as the following integral, where um, integral is uh, taken over all pure state distributed with respect to uh, hard measure. Mm -hmm. And um, so Michal, can I have, uh, uh, maybe Philip wanted to ask something. Ah, no, yes, I just wanted to clarify. So you assume in a sense that there is no hysteresis in this noise, in this light in some way, yes? That like yes. noise acting on the one gate is independent on this. Uh, exactly, uh, okay. yes. Yeah, okay, yes, cool. yes, yes, yes. So this is one of the, uh, of the crucial assumptions for this kind of uh, protocols. So can I have just, it's, uh, can you just go back one slide? Sorry, Michal. Yes. Just one, one question. Uh, okay, it's a very naive one. So uh, this independence of noise on the unitary is uh, like kind of it's clear. Just would it like my intuition is that it doesn't really matter if the T goes before or after the unitary. Does it does it matter? Like in uh, well, well, if you have n gates, right, one yeah. after other. Um, so you have to couple everything like that, that, that every okay. U is connected with T. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, but, I, but I think the, the final result will, 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 not, uh, will not feel uh, what is the direction. But, uh, but as far as I know, um, all models are construct, constructed in the following way, which I have written here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm, because of our assumption that compose noise and our ideal unitary U, U, this average fidelity, the complexity of computing the, this average fidelity can be reduced to computing the average fidelity between uh, our channel representing noise and the identity operator. And further, we also uh, use a similar quantity, um, which we define by small f. And we will call this small uh, f as a depolarizing parameter. 
Um, of course, um, there is also other approach. Uh, it's called unitarity, and it's not denoted by Kai Hill, but uh, in my presentation, we focus on average fidelity um, of quantum gates. Okay, so what is the randomness benchmarking uh, protocol? So, uh, so we prepare some initial state raw on KQD and we fix number M. Then having our uh, gate set composed of ideal gates, we construct the following chain of unitaries in such a way that this unitary U M plus one is an inversion of unitaries from one to M. Okay, so in ideal world, such composition always equals to identity, right? But, but um, normally running some experiment, every such U is affected by our quantum channel T representing, um, representing uh, noise in our system. Uh, so after every sequence, I'm oh, sorry, after every, every sequence M, uh, uh, we measure the, we measure the uh, sequ uh, sequence fidelity, which is defined here. Okay, and of course, uh, this fidelity uh, cannot be equal one because uh, this noise is uh, different than identity. And then repeating steps two and three, uh, uh, we compute the average fidelity and later repeated, uh, repeating steps for one to four, we, we compute so-called uh, sur surreal probabilities, which we denote by the symbol P, okay? And uh, repeating this procedure for Faraday lens M yields to a list of probabilities. And our goal is to fit some decay curve to it and to to basically extract what is uh, the average fidelity uh, of our gate. And this is possible, ah, but maybe we go further, let's do a small summary because at the first look, this, uh, the, this uh, protocol is quite complicated. So we have two situations. Here we have ideal situation where we don't have noise. So whenever our input is some state raw, as the output also get uh, raw. Uh, when we have some noise in the system, of course, our uh, output on the right-hand side is different than run and raw. Uh, so, um, so there is point for calculating these parameters P. And it can be shown that, for example, for Clifford gates, uh, for this uh, set of points, you can always fit the following curve where, uh, where the constant A and B are fitting parameters and they do not depend on the quantum channel, but they depend on state preparation and, and measurement. Why this parameter F is uh, this polarizing parameter uh, connected with average fidelity of our gate set. Uh, sorry, Mano, could you go back a little bit uh, to slides? Uh, to here? Uh, yeah, one more. Yeah, this one. So I just wanted to, uh, because the like interpretation of average fidelity is, well, I mean, uh, s somehow clear. So, but what is this uh, probability of survival? I mean, I didn't uh, manage to uh, to get the the six point, right? Yes. Yeah, so what well, uh, like what it uh, what is the interpretation of that? Uh, well, basically, you can also think about the survival probability as a 
as a fidelity, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but we have also... here like expected value of this noisy channel, uh -huh. yes, yes, uh, on our quantum state, and uh, this is the and uh, uh, okay, so the uh, there is some POVM element. So uh, the fact that this is a POVM, this is only because you want to like. Uh, 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 include the noise, yes? Like mm -hmm. in the perfect scenario, let's say no measurement noise, it would be just a normal projective measurement in, uh, or like, uh, mm -hmm. okay, okay. Uh, I'm just like trying to follow uh, okay. the detail. Uh, right, okay. So this is also some kind of fidelity. Uh, yes, yes. We Sort of right, of... because you kind of like see what is the overlap of your measurement with the noisy, uh, mm -hmm. with the uh, average, uh, like a channel acting on the quantum state. Yes, something like mm -hmm. this. Okay, okay. Uh, sorry, I just didn't manage. Sorry, maybe I got I got distracted by some other things. So, so can you just go back to, to what this? Sorry, this this e this e is a bit uh, mysterious for me. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. So it is just measurement here, right? Yes. And it, it's I not see, specified. Okay, it's a, so e is some effect or is it? Well, this is just, uh, no, you have, you can assume that you have uh, two measurement, e and identity minus e, basically. And you choose. Okay, so two effects, fine. Yes. Uh-huh. Because, mm-hmm. With measure, so what does it mean measurement errors here? Like, well, because we, we assume that uh, because when you make real experiments, right? Um, yeah. Not your gates are affected by noise, but also you have uh, errors in the state preparation and in measurement. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe maybe I turn my uh, wait wait wait. Uh, so is uh, no okay I understand this so but is it like you like if you had no measurement uh, if you had no measurement errors is it true that this e would be just equal to rho? Mm. Yes. Uh, I think you're right because then we don't. Because it's like. That's why I mean it's like you yes. talk about survival probability, etc. Yes. Right? Yes, you're right. Because then, in case of no noise, right, we need to get one. Mm -hmm. So right. it's a, it's a, ideally it's a projection on row, the ideal row, but there is measurement noise, so you just call it some POVM element. E. E. Yes. Okay. Awesome. So I think now this figure of merit is clear. Uh, the survival probability. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we said what is the result in case of Clifford Gates. Uh, however, for non Clifford Gates, situation is much a little bit more complicated because um, uh, the fitting curve are of the following form, where alpha is some part some set uh, of parameters which we don't know yet and uh, values of alpha depends depend on uh, on the gate set basically but whenever we have some um, gate set which forms a group we can use some variation of randomized benchmarking which is called characters random benchmarking and this is the case, right? Because, uh, for example, Clifford Gates uh, belongs to this class, right? Or discussed later, um, whale uh, operates. Okay, so let's do some really. Just maybe, uh, sorry, Michael, can I just co comment on this? Uh, because some people are maybe potentially interested in this kind of business. But they do not realize it because they know those things under different names. Okay, so just what is somehow happening here under the hood is that, uh, like, when you do this randomized benchmarking protocol, you do essentially multiple 
like av you do like averages of like gate set actions, okay? Yes. And then uh, Clifford like those 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 groups they act okay like you do how how sorry that, that I bump in Michael like they, they act some like you have like independent averages and it's like so stuff is let's say in the case of T for the group is quadratic in the unitaries and it's for this reason it's very important that those Clifford uh, unitaries they for they form a two design. Okay, because mm -hmm. that allows like a great simplification of those integrals that appear, and that's why you have those formulas. And then for yeah. other groups, potentially other groups that can be relevant in practice, like you have uh, like more invariants, like uh, of the than just identity and the swap. I'm, I'm like simplifying or like identity <laughs> and the maximal limit, whatever, right? And that's why you mm -hmm. have those more. Uh, those other objects uh, that Michal. Yes, 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 yes. On the left hand side, this is one particular of gates, right? Uh, from which everything has started, basically. Um, okay, so so we have to make some really, really short um, summary uh, from from group theories. So we assume that the G is finite group and V is some linear space. Uh, and with this group, we associate some representation uh, phi, oops, phi. And we also assume that our representations are in form of uh, unitary matrices. And this is always can be done. Um, we also, um, for, for every for, for representation of every element G from the group, uh, we can decompose it into irreducible components. And uh, this tensor M mu lambda uh, denotes multiplicities. So for example, if this multiplicity is two, it means that this element uh, phi lambda G uh, occurs twice, right? But, uh, in our case, uh, we will assume that uh, in our decomposition, these multiplicity numbers are equal to zero or to one. And uh, always, and this is again, uh, because you, you, one can think, okay, but we have a lot of groups and you, know, you have multiplicities greater than one in most of the cases. But uh, for Clifford gates and for uh, for while operators, um, this is the case. Th this uh, number m lambda is always dichotomic. And with every such representation, we can also associate so-called character function. This is function from g to real numbers, and is defined just as a trace over our space from, from a unitary representation of element G. So um, this group theoretic approach allows us to construct projectors P on, ev on every irreducible component using uh, these characters. And now if you recall this uh, randomized benchmarking protocol, uh, we, then in this random benchmarking protocol, we have application uh, uh, of you of from our group many times. So basically uh, some uh, tensor products will appear and, and it allows us to, to use um, tools suggested by, for, for example, Schurlema and si simplify the composition here on the left hand side, basically uh, making this character randomized benchmarking protocol, which differs from randomized benchmarking protocols only uh, on the level of some technicalities. Basically, uh, you decompose everything what you uh, everything what is possible into irreducible component and reduce your analysis from whole space 
to irreducible space. So the complexity of such uh, analysis decreases. And then um, instead of these numbers P, you get a list of real numbers K and uh, every such uh, string leaves, let's say comes from a uh, relatively component lambda. And this allows you somehow to isolate these parameters uh, F lambda N, okay? Because you see, because of this projection rules, basically you can, uh, you can rule out this um, so summation over, uh, over alpha. Um, it's, it's only important that you need to know this idea, right? That because we could go through all the proof and show how, how does it work in practice, but, but the, the most important part is that, that you can really isolate this parameter because this is these parameters we want to, to learn, right? These S, because they are connected with this average fidelity uh, of our uh, of our gate. Okay. Mm. So our contribution to the business is that um, we use uh, randomized benchmarking using well unitaries uh, and we apply it uh, for classical simulation of noisy quantum circuits. Our protocol based on well unitaries also robust with respect to the spam error and it has reasonably good uh, scaling. And what is more, it allows us to identify a number of error models interesting from uh, experimental point of view. Mm, and it does not depend on the geometry of the circuit. So for example, uh, this approach is good also, you know, you can have some tensor networks, but then you have to assume some geometry, but, but it's, we don't require any uh, interior symmetries in our, um, in our uh, devices, let's say. Mm, and of course, it allows us to test a wide, wide range of quantum device, devices. And today uh, we focus only on virtual quantum Eigen solvers. So we have to start from the beginning. So we defined uh, well Heisenberg unitaries. Uh, we know that by W and you know, this is just composition of um, shift operator F some rotation operator uh, with respective uh, powers. And of course, as you can see for qubits, uh, when D equals two, we reproduce Pauli matrices, but most important property is that they form uh, orthogonal uh, bases in the space of matrices. They are representation of ZD times ZD. And because they form this base, we can compute um, every element uh, of our channel. Here, here we focus on the noise uh, in the following form, right? So, so, so important for, for the later. So basically, if you want to, if you want to learn about some uh, of diagonal element of our noise channel, we have to compute such uh, su such trace, okay? And for simplicity, because we deal with a lot of qubits, uh, we will denote such string by some bold uh, indices A and B, okay? So, um, and our methods, uh, allows us to investigate uh, models of noise, which are, for example, diagonal in whale basis. And surprisingly, we can find a lot of uh, interesting uh, uh, model of noises of, of such kinds. For example, local dephasing is diagonal in whale basis and local depolarizing is also diagonal in whale basis, right? So, in every diagonal uh, channel in whale basis have the following form, right? And for qubits, we, we re reduce our problem to so-called mixed uh, Pauli channels. And having this um, warm up with whale basis, we, 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 now we can 
move to a randomized benchmarking protocol. So this is somehow adaptation of, um, of standard randomized benchmarking protocol and uh, character uh, randomized benchmarking protocol. But with such difference that uh, now we would like to learn something about the noise which we have in our system, right? So for example, we fix here the spring A and B, and it corresponds to some major element of uh, our noise channel. And we would like to learn about this element of the channel. So, so, so basically the rest protocol is the same as usual uh, uh, character randomized benchmark protocol with the difference that now um, we, 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 we replace all unitaries by, uh, by our uh, whale operators, right? Um, I think it's more or less clear, right? Uh, yeah, but like, can I ask like some naive question? Okay, it's, it's like a simple question. So often in quantum information, people consider the case of, of like prime D or like not even, not even D for uh, for some representation theoretic reasons. Uh, but I think it's important for Clifford's, right? Uh, fair enough. No, you're yeah, right. Sorry, yes, yes. Yeah, good, okay. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think it's for the full Clifford. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, and here when we measure A, the protocol, whole protocol is constructed such a way that as an output, we get character of uh, our representation. This is technical, I think, but um, basically uh, it allows us to, to write down expectation uh, value uh, of our sequence in very attractive form for the analysis. And, um, and uh, what, 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 what? Okay. Okay, and of course now by selecting different sequence lengths and performing uh, exponential fitting, we estimate uh, the diagonal in the weight basis of the composition of a uh, T and U, right? Because this here under trace uh, is basically a matrix matrix elements which we uh, which we want to learn. Um, and the maximum sequence length is determined by the uh, spectral gap lambda of the of the noise channel. And in the case of symmetric noise, when it is um, T star equals T, uh, we can prove um, the following theorem basically we can find estimate mu of mu, uh, which, is, uh, which is close, uh, which is close, um, with probability delta performing this uh, number of uh, randomized benchmarking experiments, basically. So, uh, and of course, uh, this lambda be uh, can be uh, effectively compute uh, if we have assumed uh, if we if assume a noise a noise model. So, but here, as you can see, this theorem says only about the diagonal element of the uh, noise channel, and what about the of diagonal elements? So. Oh, sorry, can I ask something naively? Or maybe uh -huh. Philip wanted to ask again something. Uh, yes, I was about to uh, as, as well. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to ask about this uh, symmetricity of the noise channel. So 
like uh, can you somehow give some examples because i don't have at all intuition about this, well like... okay honestly basically basically you don't have to assume you can we have the invention of this theorem uh, without this uh, symmetric assumption but uh, then um instead of uh and basically, the, the statement is almost the same because uh, when, when you have a symmetric, a symmetric noise, right? You you have to estimate, you have to compute one minus lambda, and in case uh, when you drop this assumption, just ju just lambda. But the statement uh -huh. is the same. And uh, so so it, like practical difference will be the number of experiments. Uh, yes. 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 Okay. But this model of noises, which I have shown earlier, right? When you compute. So the uh, one was the polarizing noise, right? Yeah. So that's clear. Yeah. And the uh, something else, uh, like some example, do you uh, know uh, yeah. other? I, I'm just asking yeah. out of uh, using the polarizing. Mm -hmm. So just this symmetric, Michal, just to be clear, the, the corresponding noise operator is just. Uh, well, noise map is just uh, mm, self dual. This is what. Yes, you mean. exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, um, this is maybe. Proper yeah. That's, so, like, yes. whenever, for example, you have convex combination of unitary channels, that would be like the. Mm -hmm. Right? It's for that. I completely okay. Okay. Such nice, nice word describing this proper. <laughs> I'm just, okay, I have some questions. Uh, so, like, how many different EREPs this, this viral group has. It seems to me that it has exponentially many, right, in this space, right? Uh, or, um, because you have like, when you have n qubits, right, and you do it. Well, that's true, but please take into account that you here you consider a specific string, right? I see. Also, you do maybe just some uh, what uh, so specific strings, or it's probably just like two elements, like sort of uh, subgroup of the like. Okay, so because it's like like those elements they square to identity channel or something. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, I see, I see. So you focus on this particular string. Thanks. Okay. Um, so let's back to the of diagonal elements to have a uh, full statement. He, of course, here we have, uh, this is the weakness of our protocol because to, to get knowledge about of diagonal elements, we have to assume that access to noiseless click C, right? Then of course, from the general theory, we know that always exists such C, which maps um, one string a1, b1 to a2, b2, right? Because um, Clifford Gates acts uh, on uh, well operators like permutations, basically. So they map one uh, well operator to another, multiplying by phase. Okay. Okay. And this property, which is written here, allows us to basically um, uh, compute uh, of diagonals element by just by putting our Clifford gaze, gate C uh, before our uh, noisy channel, right? Mm -hmm. And here we have some examples. For example, uh, we focus on the phasing and the polarizing uh, noise. And, and we see that, 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 that really performing our protocol, uh, we can learn a little bit about what kind uh, of noise um, we have uh, in our system. But of course, to be honest with you, in general, uh, we require um, a lot of uh, parameters to compute. So, so it's good only for small systems because here you have scaling. Okay. But assuming locality of the noise, we can reduce the complexity. And you know, then of course, a number 
of parameters which we have to um, estimate scales uh, really nice uh, with n. So our analysis, our randomized benchmark protocol, if our goal is to learn uh, also the noise which we have in our system, uh, we have to make this assumption about locality of the noise. But okay? uh, sir, but this scaling is n to the power of the dimension, or uh, uh, I think this is typo. It should be n. Ten. Uh, n. To the n. Only n. Ah, only n. Yes. N. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's better indeed. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. So by locality, you mean uh, just that those errors, they are like tensor product or? Uh, yes, for example, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, for example, or exactly? Because <laughs> it's... Well, uh... So do you mean like, because there might be different types of locality. People mean loc uh, different things by locality. You can either assume that errors are independently uh, like on every particle, right? Huh? Like some people call local. Sometimes you would say, I oh, know that the range of your noise, like, or the weight of Pauli, like, they don't affect at the same time more than fixed number of qubits or something. Mm -hmm. Well, if you want to, to have a um, reasonable number of, of parameters to estimate, we have to assume local, you know, that means that. Um, for for every every gate, we apply a different U, basically, right? Mm -hmm. So lo 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 locality means locality in the sense to which you, which you have said. So independently on every qubit. Qubit. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Uh, and but it and it is uh, possible to consider the uh, more general type of locality, like also like Michal said that for you know for example it uh, acts independently on all qubits, but on two qubits it acts as uh, one, <laughs> like uh -huh. you know not independently. It's, yes, uh, it, it's possible, but then of course yeah, it will. The number of parameters will grow. Sure, I'm just wondering if this you can is... well you can you can apply it to any model which which you want, but the, the, right the, the, okay is how much you can pay. Okay, okay, sure, it makes sense. Yeah, thank you. Um, so having this protocol, we can uh, at least try to say something about classical simulation of uh, noisy quantum circuits. So, um, so uh, every state we can represent in our well basis using the, this formula. And let's consider some noisy C, circuit CB uh, with, uh, let's say, N uh, channels. And we we'll assume that our input is a product state. And our uh, noisy circuit produces some output uh, sigma. And we, we say that we can uh, simulate uh, classically uh, our circuit if we can estimate this expectation value classically up to some additive error. So by estimate classically means that some from probability distribution, right? Uh, effectively, basically. So for example, in polynomial time. Right. I'm a bit confused here. So you, because you consider just two outcome measurement basically here, because like just typically just this weak simulation is just about sampling from probability distribution, right? Yes, 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 yes. Um, mm -hmm. uh, right. So it's more like something, and then it's like when you don't have too many outcomes to estimate, you can then estimate, right? Okay, but uh, you know, this is just no. I don't assume here that uh, this e right is um, basically um, the e from the randomized benchmarking protocol, right? This is some. 
Mm -hmm. if so I just wanted to clarify, do you mean this uh, weak classical simulation, the sense of classical, like that you can classically efficiently sample to some accuracy from probability distribution corresponding to the yes. outcome? Okay. This is the case. Uh, this is the case here. So, um, some, so a little bit of notation. So, uh, for every channel, by L one norm, we define the following quantity, which is here. So, we, so we just uh, sum up over all rows, and by L one to L one. Uh, we understand the maximum uh, from uh, uh, this quantity, okay? So this is how we define uh, our norms here. And this algorithm is based basically on L1 sampling of matrices and, and, and vectors. So we have to assume that we can sample uh, from such uh, probability distribution which we have here, right? And we have to check uh, how well uh, we can sample it. Where this, this, uh, <clears throat> for example, uh, phi chi, this is one of the channel uh, in our uh, quantum circuit. And uh, the circuit sampling algorithm is uh, relatively uh, simply. Uh, because we sample some string A0, B0 from the distribution B0. Then we go uh, to the point uh, two, and our output is given by the, the, the following uh, quantity, which is written here. This is uh, quite an ugly quantity, but, um, but no, we, we, we need such output to, to just uh, probing the uh, efficiency, efficiency of uh, simulation of our, uh, our circuit. But uh, what is the most important is the following theorem that um, taking this many samples, uh, we can guarantee that with the high probability, the real average of the output is, is close to our uh, theoretical estimate, right? So having bound on NB in terms of uh, number of qubits, we can say, um, can we uh, efficiently sample from the property distribution described uh, previously, right? Because if NB depends uh, exponentially in number of N, then we cannot do this efficiently. If it's, for example, polynomially, uh, then it's possible and it means that our circuit can be. Um, yes. Uh, right. And this algorithm for sampling is also efficient. Yes. Uh, because yeah. I mean, I. Uh, okay. Cool. Cool. So this is efficiency in terms of number of samples you need to uh, uh, get. I mm -hmm. see. Cool. Cool. Thank you. So. Uh, Yes. Uh, Michal, can I also uh, can I ask? So, just what is the uh, because what you just what you presented seems to be pretty similar to the to the work by Hakov Pashayan and maybe Stephen Bartlett from some years back. Just like some of you maybe were present when I was referring this work in one of our group meetings. So it seems to be like adaptation of this result to the to this particular particular let's say uh, quasi uh, like family of quasi probability distribution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're right, and and we cite them uh, properly, so we don't have. No, no I just wanted to be, be certain <laughs> if it's okay. But then I just wanted to like if so, then sorry for that. I wanted to emphasize that you. In the end, you don't do what is the drawback, as far as I know, of that algorithm. And then probably also this thing that you have here is that in the end, you estimate a single expectation value, namely the trace row E. You do, you do not sample, you do not sample from uh, the probability distribution of 
uh, like some POVM that would possibly complicate it multi qubit POVM. And this is like an open problem if one can kind of, you know, mm -hmm. uh, get see. around it. Right. So, but, and th because this is like, uh, but here, uh, so he is saying that you can sample here from the specific E, right? Uh, using this algorithm. And uh, the problem is whenever there is a lot of those E's, I yeah. understand. Yes. Okay, cool. I mean, so, so like it's, it's like unbiased estimator of this quantity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you have many quantities, you, 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 you might have problems. Yeah. Yeah, probably you're right. Mm -hmm. That's true, but you know, in some cases, it allows you to tell um, what is going on, right, in your in your syllabus. Because, for example, I think you know, having um, general answers in the most general situations, well, um, well, we have to make some restrictions, right? On the no, sure. It's not. It's not a criticism. It's just I wanted yeah, to. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like sometimes, like I, yeah. Sorry for yeah. No, no, no problem. That's fine. Completely fine. Um, okay. Um, so maybe slide. I will skip due to the time which passed, and I go to variational quantum against solar. Um, so this. Variation on the quantum uh, again solver. This is some hybrid algorithm, right? Between, let's say, um, real quantum devices and, and you know, uh, classical devices like computers. And um, the problem is, is the following: we have some thermodynamic problem, and we encode this problem into some here qubit. Uh, Newtonian, and on our uh, quantum device, we uh, prepare some initial state psi, which depends on some set of parameters theta. And we would like to know the expectation value, but uh, we would like to minimize the expectation value, right? So basically, the problem reduces to uh, finding the ground state of some particular Hamiltonian, right? Um, the Hamiltonian has to be mapped to a system of uh, interacting qubit with non exponentially increasing number of terms. And sometimes it's the case, for example, when we describe as classical optimization problems or some uh, Hamiltonians describing fermionic condensed matter problems or molecular systems. If you would like to know more about specific um, Hamiltonians, I refer to this really nice uh, review, um, review papers about the uh, variation of quantum elements solvers and quantum chemistry. But um, having this expectation value, we obtain some cost function, and this cost function can be basically, uh, uh, can be basically uh, minimized on classical computer. Uh, then we obtain a set of parameters theta and on our uh, quantum, uh, let's say, uh, uh, device prepare new trial state with updated parameters theta and we repeat this procedure uh, until we get uh, good, uh, good solution uh, theta. Um, theta, uh, theta star. So you can see here we have some interplay between um, quantum devices and and a classical optimization uh, problem. Um, and here you have one possible realization of such uh, of such uh, version of quantum eigen solvers. We talk only about this quantum part. So uh, we have uh, n capital N qubits uh, on the input, um, and here we would like to know, for example, energy values of the following Hamiltonian which we have here. 
where sigma i, sigma j are just Pauli, uh, sigma z, sigma z are just Pauli matrices. And uh, we assume that uh, um, our noise is over rotation noise, which is in general non Clifford uh, gate. And uh, our entangled gates are just you know, propagation of uh, sinus in the following form. Um, you can ask um, why we use this model of uh, entangled gates. And, up to my best knowledge, uh, um, people simply use C nodes to, to construct uh, some entangled operations. So, uh, assumption of such form of this U end is quite general at least, at least now, right? Uh, and also, it allows us to apply our model, uh, our randomized benchmarking. So, Right, but this is like a generic scheme, and I think people sometimes like consider also specific types of unitaries for some uh, problems in chemistry where they know some structure. Yes. Right, there is something yes. like this. Okay, just uh, cool. Uh, and having this this model, um, basically. Um, mm, Basics, basically, we can compute um, uh, L1, L1 norm because we assume that C0 uh, suffer from two local depolarizing noise with parameter PC, and uh, our rotation gates uh, suffer from local depolarizing noise uh, PY, right? So we represent our evolution in whale basis and uh, taking into account that. Uh, you know, this L1 norm from Clifford gates always equal to one, uh, we can show uh, that this quantity, which describe evolution uh, uh, of, um, of our device is given by the maximum from the following uh, four, uh, four, uh, four parameters, right? Mm. And it seems that sample energy values with to H, which is given by this formula, uh, require this number uh, of uh, of tests, right? So basically, uh, sorry, Michal. So this is the number of experiments you are talking about, like uh, the sampling complexity yes. of the problem. Yes. This is not about classical no. simulation. In here. Uh, yes, uh, so I'm, I'm just asking if this is about classical simulation or not. Yes, this I is about think. classical okay, simulation. Awesome. We ask cool. how many samples uh, maybe we need. Uh, okay, okay, super, fine. Okay, so so using this uh, uh, ap ap approach in a well basis, we, we are, we are able to, to compute the number of, of these uh, samples. And of in, course, this what, yes? Can I just bump in? Like, I think it's a brilliant idea because basically what, what you did, like, instead of having, I mean, it's connected to, 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 to my question. So, so you actually care because BQE, like it's all about estimation of this expectation value. Right. Yes. So instead of doing some measurement operator like Hackop did and others, right, you basically plug this machinery to the Hamiltonian itself in the last step to have yes. an estimate for for the Hamiltonian, right? For for the expectation value on a specific state, right? Exactly. And that, that's why in this sense, in this sense, this is a classical simulation because it's 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 like a, a cost of producing. A, a sample uh, from, uh, yeah, uh, right, right. Uh, and this just, I wanted to, so, so this epsilon is there, is just like the, the, the your error, uh, your confidence, right? Mm -hmm. exactly. Okay, great. great. But of course, you know, here we have assumed uh, some specific uh, kind of noise, right? Which uh, which uh, behaves uh, well in whale basis, okay? 
Yeah. So probably having some the, 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 the different models, we, we will get um, different numbers uh, of mm -hmm. different number n uh, here. But uh, I believe that you know this result is quite nice because at least for this um, theoretically important model of noises um, in quite broad class, you can uh, really effectively compute uh, the border between you know classical simulation and, 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 and let's say quantumness right so so to summarize uh, this is just the same slide which we have at the beginning so maybe just just uh, to remind you that uh, what, what we have done so we just have some small variation of randomized character randomized benchmarking protocols exploiting um, uh, well well operators and uh, having this particular choice of uh, operators uh, we are able to somehow learn ourselves uh, what kind of noise uh, which we have we have in our systems at least um, we can try to uh, to get knowledge about this some particular important model of noise like the phasing the polarizing or any other noisy channel which can be uh, represented uh, uh, for example diagonally in in uh, in in well basis okay so we have also reasonably good uh, scaling with certain assumptions. For example, uh, we have to uh, assume that our noise is local. And we can test a little bit uh, uh, classical simulability of some uh, quantum uh, devices. But of course, there is a lot of things uh, to do. For example, uh, at the beginning, I said that our uh, test does not require any geometric properties of the circuit, but potentially if we be able to somehow to incorporate the geometry of our uh, circuit, we could decrease a uh, 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 number of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of experiments, and B, okay? And also it would be good maybe to try to deal with different model of noise, for example, general amplitude damping noise on bias noise, but here we would have to find a different basis, I suppose. And basically we write all the procedure for this case. Um, and also it would be good to check uh, what we can get for different, uh, let's say, uh, quantum devices, not necessarily variational quantum eigen solver, right? So, so these are three questions which are potentially uh, interesting, I think, for further research. But there, there seems to be also really hard to solve. So I think that is more or less everything. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Michal, thank for you. a very nice talk. Thanks. Uh, we have time now for questions, uh, comments to the, to the speaker. Right. So uh, it's I have a funny question. So did you guys run some uh, implementation of this on like, you know, numerical simulations? Uh, well, they, huh? they are on their way, I have to say. So we, we plan to put them uh, into uh, paper on archives soon. So you mm -hmm. will update it. Okay, cool. <laughs> Any other questions to Michal? Um, I have one, uh, I have one. Can you can you go to this last slide? Maybe last. Okay. Yeah. This conclusions. Ah. <laughs> okay. 
so this uh, uh, what what do you mean by past causal techniques if I can ask well basically there is a paper by uh, let me find the reference uh, now I want to give you first the reference but now I cannot find it but basically um, there are some constraints on the information flow in 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 uh, uh, in, um, in circuits in, in circuits right mm. and they imply some past casual uh, uh, techniques which can be applied basically um like in uh, uh, well it's hard to describe into sentences but but ba basically um um mm, Considering the, the, this casualty which we have in our circuit should somehow uh, allow us to simplify uh, uh, our bounds because you can basically read off a few additional constraints. You don't have to estimate too many parameters then because they are somehow not connected uh, uh one to another during the, the evolution uh, of your of your circuit mm -hmm. okay i will be actually later maybe i contact you and ask for for the details uh right um right so uh, so this result of of yours like the i mean both but like the the last one is it's kind of very nice because it, it it has this nice scaling. Uh, I, I mean, in certain regime that like you have uh, like unbiased sample from uh, from the energy that you want to estimate, almost unbiased sample from the energy that you want to estimate. Uh, but then it, there was like a threshold, right? Uh, that yes. okay, this this uh, strong of the polarizing noise has to be quite big, right? Like uh -huh. strength. Yes. Right. So, uh, in the light of this, do you think that though, like, uh, yeah? So, do you think that in the light of your result and maybe some possible generalizations, is this EQE without any error correction, like, feasible, or it's like a, because you know, one can say, okay, if we can do it classically. Then, Oh, that, yeah, that, 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 that's a good question, you know. Um, I don't know how to answer on it because, first of all, we have to still remember that we here we assume some specific model of noise, right? Normally, if mm -hmm. you have really BQE, suppose that we have it, right? We are not sure that we have full characterization of the noise which we have in our circuit. So basically, first of all, we would have to learn what is going on there. We have to, to, to learn ourselves how to model this noise. And then we can try to maybe apply these techniques or similar mm -hmm. techniques uh, to get such uh, to get such a bounce on number of experiments basically right only assuming some uh, some uh, models we, we can compute something mm -hmm. right now right and the hope is that uh, maybe um, when you run this experiment and you learn about this matrix element of your noise you will be close uh, uh, to this depolarizing maybe or some linear combination of known models uh, mm -hmm. of noise, sure. and then this sure. this uh, the, these things could be of potential interest, right? But I, I understand yes. it would be potentially right. like a key or like a blow to uh, this industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to say that you know. <laughs> no, I said I said so. It can be potentially, and Michal Sujinski not it's not saying this. It's just some comments on 